Dennis, as you say, uh, Sir Geoffrey has has written a forward to your book, and it's a it, it's a very fulsome forward as well, and and it talks voluminously and with great praise about your innings against the West Indies. And you went to the West Indies and in, in 74 and you scored all of those runs, um, your first double century. Um, but before before we move on to, to the next winter and to Australia, you, you had this intense success in the Caribbean. But it but, the, the tour was quite controversial, particularly because of the Calaturan affair. Do you want to tell us about that? And you you were on the field when that happened. Yeah, um, uh, Ka- Calaturan was, was batting, and we were coming to the last over of the day, and Greggy happened to be bowling it. And at that stage, he'd been bowling these these off cutters, and uh, I was I was at slip, I think, with Notty Notty keeping standing up. Uh, Fletch was quite close to me, and. Uh, um, I think it was the last ball where Kelly pushed it down the wicket and uh, sorry, it wasn't Kelly. No, Kelly was at the non-striking end, wasn't he? Sorry. The batsman at the striking end, I forget what, around Canai, something like that, pushed it down to Greggy. The last ball, Alvin started to walk off out of his crease, of course, because the pavilion was that way. He had to come past us. And Greggy took the bales off and appealed. And, uh, and Fletch and I have looked at one another and said, oh, my God. And of course, he was given out, so he was really upset. And uh, he's bat hit the ground, and the, the steps uh, looked quite hard as he walked up those steps. And uh, we had we had an incident on our hands. Um, the crowd were going mad, um, and um, Gary Sobers came into our dressing room and he said, uh, "Tony said the only way you're going to get out is with me, so you, you're going to come out with me now." And uh, Gary took him out, which was which was wonderful uh, offer. And um, I think that uh, if he hadn't have done that, we'd have had real problems. Um, we all went out and, he, and as, as he went out, he said to Fletcher and I, who were looking at him, he said, uh, wouldn't you, you'd have done that, wouldn't you? And we both said, no, no. It was the last ball of the day. He wasn't making a single, you know, it was time, time to go home. It was time to go in. And uh, that was uh, great, but Greg, he had played his cricket like that. and. Uh, you know, we went to Australia, which you're going to talk about in a minute later, and he revved, he revved them up. Yeah. He took the mickey out of Lillian Thompson. And uh, I said, Fletcher and I said to him, what are you doing? What are you upsetting the fast bowlers for? You know, we've got to go and bat against them as well, you know. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way he played his cricket. Yeah. He was, a wonder- he was a wonderful cricketer. Whatever you think about Tony Gregg, he was a wonderful cricketer. And his stats stand up. Indeed. And he got... He got to, in that series that we're going to talk about, the Lillian Thompson. He got two hundreds in that series, and that was that was fearsome. Len, Len Hutton was out there. He came out to, to Sydney. He said he'd never seen anything like. It. Yeah. He said he didn't. Don't know whether he, he talked about the body line. He said this is not body line. This is headline. So you, I mean, that that winter tour to the Caribbean. You've you've got a big hundred, a double hundred. Um, other runs there, you, 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 you come back an established England player and you score a hat full of runs throughout the summer and England are on a high and off you go to Australia. But before that, the selection of the side for Australia was, was that the Lillian Thompson tour as we know it, uh, was quite controversial. And the question, the big question people like me were asking is, why isn't Jon Snow? on that tour why aren't we taking some firepower out there and he's got a psychological advantage over them from the 71 tour why wasn't he going dennis you have an insight into that don't you yes um we'd had a test trial at worcester they decided that the um selectors that we should have a test trial and snowy was bowling to boix and i to open the innings and it was a flat wicket and uh, snowy couldn't get it up above knee height and that's not the sort of wicket that a uh, fast bowler enjoys bowling on. And he, he said, well, I'm going to bowl underarm. <laughs> underarm in a test trial? He said, well, I'm not playing on this wicket, bowling to these two on this blooming wicket. He said, uh, I'm going to bowl underarm. So he came along, he bowled underarm in a test trial to Boix, and Boix hit it for four. And he bowled the next one, and Boix hit it for four. So I said, can I come down there, Boix? He said, no, 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 no. He said, they all count, you know. They all count. I think he, 
I think he, he, was, he, he certainly got five fours. He might have got six fours off the over. And, uh, and that, of course, that didn't go down well at all. And uh, um, the selectors were really upset that, uh, you know, they put this, uh, this match on to, to see people under pressure. And uh, um, Snow, Snowy Snowy done that. So Snowy was a bit taboo. Um, and, of course, you know, we, they were going to select the, the, the team for, for, for Australia. And uh, I remember sitting with Greggy, Naughty, Fletch, Underwood and myself having dinner one night and saying, the first person you've got to put down is Jon Snow. Mike Dines, this was, who's, who's, who'd been named captain. And he said, what if they won't let me take him? So he'd obviously, he'd, he'd heard that they probably would, weren't going to take him because of what he did during the early part of the season, bowling underarm at Boyd's for myself. So um, we said, you've got to, you don't come out of that meeting without Jon Snow as your number one, because in 1971, he put the what sits up there, up those Australian batsmen and uh, he, he can still do it for six or seven overs. He can still do it and they will be worried about that. And uh, um, the story goes that Mike um, went to the meeting and uh, Gabby Allen came across who lived in the house at the back of Lords and he came into the meeting and um, he said, no, I, I, I'm, I'm, no I'm, not, I'm not supposed to be here. Um, it's not an agenda item. And um, he said, you'll make sure one thing, John Snow does not go to Australia. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Good night. And uh, Ozzy's weekly was chairman. Uh, um, Mike was captain and uh, the other selectors, I think Tonka Taylor was another selector. I uh, can't remember the other two, but uh, um, John Snow was not selected in our touring party, um, which was which was a shame because as the wickets turned out, they were they were quite lively for Lillian Thompson. They would have been quite lively for for John Snow. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't. I don't think it would have made difference to the the outcome of the series. I think Australia because they had the firepower with Lillian Thompson, and uh, they were a good side. Uh, I don't think it would have made a. a uh, much difference to the outcome that are still beaten us, but probably by, by not as much. Yeah. Um, but that was a great shame for us. And I think that, you know, we felt that heavily that uh, the great John Snow was not with us because you only had to put him on the field and put him on to bowl. And, and, and I just go on now to the World Cup, the, the, the first World Cup that we had. And we played the quarter final, didn't we, or the semi final, as it was at Headingley against Australia when we were bowled out for 96 by Gary Gilmore it swung and it seemed all over the place it's heavy atmosphere and John Snow came on and the, and the two chapters went back to host half volleys I couldn't believe it I was at slip though going right back he was, he was pitching the ball up they were just waiting for the one that was going to come past their ears which happened in 1971 we had them 56 for six and we dropped yeah. two catches we dropped two catches and I'd never seen Greggy drop one before he dropped one, <coughs> and I uh, um, can't remember who dropped, but we dropped both. I think it was Dougie Waters and, uh, and Marshall. And had we got those two, we're into the tail. And yeah. uh, we, but anyway, you know that, that's what happens at cricket. That's the, that's the game. Um, but it just shows you, you know, a year later that what yeah. the, 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 the mental thing that Snowy had over over uh, those batters. Yeah, but that took the that Ashes tour without. Snowy, and of course, without boycott, who didn't go either. So perhaps you could arguably your best batsman and your best bowler not on that tour. But other things went wrong as well. And one of the things we talked about is the 21 day rule, Dennis. Yeah. The, the side weren't very happy at all, were, were they? No, um, we realised it was up. We were up against it as soon as we played that first test match. But the families came out. And uh, um, families were, were uh, by the, uh, the establishment, I think, that uh, were, were, you know, shouldn't have been out there because they didn't have families out there. They weren't allowed out there when they, when they were playing. And uh, um, families came out. And, of course, we got some terrible stick from the Aussie press about uh, Dad's Army and all that jazz with the wives and children coming out. Um, so it was, it was a very difficult time. And... Um, it was worked out in the end that um, our wives, our families, especially our wives, could only stay in the same hotel for 21 days. And once your 21 days were up, we had to ship them out somewhere. I mean, we, we, we were very lucky. We found some lovely people 
the Davises in Sydney, who uh, and this was Sydney where my 21 days was up, and we managed to go into uh, into their house, or Jill did, and, uh, and be, so after 21 days, and, and that was something that I just thought that's not right, and, and, and then you had in the team room, you had, you know, the, the chaps that hadn't got their wives out, the people like Bob Taylor and the Bob Willis, and they felt that they were lonely in the team room. So it was just, you know, the team was split and all those sort of things. It was it was really uh, difficult, very difficult times. And you're getting a bashing as well. You're losing uh, and, and losing badly and they were all over us. So it was um, not not an easy, easy, easy tour at all. And that first test at Brisbane, when he walked out to bat to open with Brian Luckhurst, and he suggested that you took the first delivery, did he? Why we, tell, us about, <laughs> <laughs> tell us about that and, and how far Dennis Lilly walked back. Go on. Well, Dennis, Dennis Lilly had back problems and uh, he'd been bowling. We'd, 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 we'd seen one or two stake matches while we were travelling around and uh, playing our cricket and uh, Dennis had only bowled off a, off a short run but suddenly here we were that uh, Greggy had felled him in their innings he came out to bat and Greggy bounced him first ball and had smashed his hands in front of his head and said lobbed up and not he'd gone and caught his and Dennis is on the floor and Greggy's telling him where to go <laughs> and, Dennis, and Dennis said to him as he got up and he walked up he said don't forget who started this Greggy <laughs> oh dear so off he, off he went and uh, he wasn't very happy. And so when Brian and I walked out to bat and I said, where's Lily going? He's, he's nearly going back to the pickets. And, uh, and, and I said, my gosh, he's taking a long, long run. I said, I said, lol, you better take first ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. That, and and the, I think the two balls that did it, that you can see it on YouTube now from Tom, I went straight past my nose and uh, off a length. And, uh, you know those those things sky you, and, yeah. uh, and then I I got a broken thumb. Edridge got a broken ribs, and we sent for the cavalry, didn't we? And uh, um, I, I think Basil Dolivier was was somebody who was uh, on the list, and, and Kipper. But anyway, Kipper came, and uh, he played as well as any of us. You know that was amazing, really. At the age of, I think he was over forty then. Yeah. Um, and he played as well as anybody. Yeah. But it was uh, very difficult, and. Uh, Broken thumbs, Said Edwards broken ribs, and uh, we had to repair and recover. And um, we played six test matches against them, yeah. <laughs> not five. <laughs> and the last, the last test match. I mean, you, you got you got ninety at Melbourne. People people often forget that. I mean, it, uh, you know, and Lily and Thompson were the absolute thunderbolt peak. And you got that 90 there. And you'd actually also got a really good score in the centenary test against Australia. Um, but on the whole, the tour left you with, with big mental scars, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, it did. Yeah, in, in quite a few ways. And, uh, you know, I always, I always said that uh, if ever I, I got into a position of, with any, any influence, that uh, we'd never have that situation again, that 21-day rule. Um, that was just awful. But I, I suppose it was you know, a bit more, uh, it was bigger because of the, of the, of the, the beating that we got on that, uh, on that tour. And uh, I, uh, John Inverati, who coached at Warwickshire, and was, was a successful coach with Nick Knight when we won the championship. Um, and John, a, a really good bloke. And every time I, I, I speak to him or I have an email from him these days, he says, how's the nightmares going, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, but uh, yeah, that was very difficult. And you came back, yeah. and every, every county medium pacer in the country decided to ban you, and, yeah. and, and Brian Luckhurst and John Edrich and all the guys have been out there thinking that you were all shut away. Yeah. What? Where did you get the, the drive to, because I call you the comeback kid, Dennis, as you know, because from that, you ended up going back and getting that double century at the Oval against the West Indies. You obviously dropped, dropped from the England side for a period of time. You come back, you fight your way back. Where does that tenacity come from to want to, to come back? You, I mean, you played for England, you, you, you know, you've played for Warwickshire, you've got a wonderful career behind you, but you wanted to do more. Where does that come from, Dennis? Well, David Brown and my wife always say I'm stubborn. 
So maybe maybe there's something in that. Um, well, it was a case of either giving the game up or finding a way to move on. So um, I tried something. I remembered what Ian Chappell had played, the way he played back and across. I remember Kenny Barrington. He, he Somehow he jumped back and played. And he, he had to alter when he played the West Indies. Wes, Wesley Hall and Charlie Griffiths in those days, those quick quick wickets out in West Indies, uh, when they were being pummeled and he found a way to play it by getting back and across. Um, so I practised that. And I practised it with uh, one or two of the uh, Warwickshire bowlers and it, it just gave me the confidence. And I started that season going back and across using this technique. And we were lucky in as much as it was a great summer. The wickets were really good. So, and, uh, so it was much easier than, you know, a season where there's heavy atmosphere and it's a bit damp and uh, the ball's moving around, it's moving off the wickets. They were good wickets. And I played against Sussex in, uh, I, it must have been a, um, a Nut West match, I think, semi-final pro probably against Sussex at Hove. And, and, and Greggy said, Snowy, give Dan a going over. And he said, I want you to knock his head off. So he came in and uh, Snowy and, and and you know he was still a handful for for five or six overs and he had that skid ball that would yeah. go through there and I, I but I got confidence in this technique and it worked and it worked and I got through Snowy and uh, and that that was uh, so Tony rang up uh, Jill and uh, my wife and said um, Dens played well in this match he said we'd we'd like him to come back for the last test what what do you think and she said uh, no he's in he's in the right place he's 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 right mentally. He'd love it. So, uh, Greg, you selected yeah. yeah. Now, you and Steely, uh, you've got Michael Michael Holder whispering death, running in and bowling at 90 miles an hour, and Andy Roberts bowling at 90 miles an hour, and, and so on. Uh, and you've got three bouncers and over for the, the first 20, 30 minutes that you're in there, and it goes down to two bounces and over, and then one bouncer and over. And then David Steele gets that, and Tony Gregg comes in. Tell us... A, Tell us about that, Dennis. Yeah. Well, t uh, Greg, he always had this. And he, he said at the beginning of the series, hadn't he, in, in 76, 66, 66, no, 76. What was it, 76? 76, right? 76, 76 yeah. yeah. He said at the beginning of the series, we're going to make the West Indies grovel. And, of course, you know, West Indies made, made uh, England grovel because uh, we, we'd lost the series, I think, when it came to that test match. And I, I came back. And of course, when he came out, he always swung his arms, didn't he, backwards? You know, I, I, I don't know. And he came, let's, let's get him, let's smash him around. We're going to get some runs here. And I said, I said, Greggy, please be quiet. It's lovely out here. It's nice and peaceful. It's nice and peaceful. It's gone down from three bounces and over to one. She just don't, don't get him going. But of course, Clive Lloyd said, Michael, back on. Andy, back on. And then it suddenly, it revved up to three bounces and over again. And uh, I, he, was, he, was, he was still chunting on Greggy when he had his leg stump knocked out of the ground many a mile by Michael, Hall, Michael Holding Thunderbolt. Uh, it was a Yorker, and I've never been so pleased in all my life to see an England captain uh, go back to the pavilion. <laughs> because after he'd gone, it was a nice day again, went down to one bounce and over, and it was nice, nice wicket, nice play. Let's... let's this is it, Mills. We just don't upset the fast bowlers. Yeah. Jeff Miller. 